My name is Alejandro Hernandez. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about C libraries and how they are, what, what role they, they play on a build system. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the toolchain components, which the C library is part of, the C libraries that are available um, on Linux, on bare metal, uh, build system availability for Yocto, for Buildroot. Um, another OSS as well, and I have a case study if I have time of how I introduced a new C library to Open Embedded recently. All right, toolchains. So I have a bunch of definitions at the beginning of the slides. Uh, I'm not going to read them all, but uh, it's for reference. Uh, that's what the definition for toolchain is. Uh, direct, distinct software development tools that are linked, chained together by specific stages. Great. Uh, typically on the tool chain, you got like bin utils that provides you an assembler, linker, uh, compiler that providers uh, are typically again uh, GCC or Clang. Uh, we got a C library as well, which uh, is where we're going to focus on. And a, I mean, I would say it's an optional component, but a debugger as well, uh, whether it comes from uh, GNU or from LLVM. Linux C libraries. Okay, so the the C library, is, it's also called the C standard library, uh, ISO C library, or libc. And it, uh, the definition is the C standard library provides macros, types, definitions, and functions for tasks, and, such as string handling, mathematical computations, input output processing, memory management, and several other operating system services. Great. Um, also know that POSIX C library, it's a superset of the ISO C library, so it's not the same. Um, and again, providers for these are typically glibc, uh, muscle, uclibc, which is kind of now uclibcng. Uh, we got bionic, if you're coming from Android. And uh, we also got uh, klibc and dietlibc. Um, I'm going to focus on the main ones. Uh, I put there like 2023 is the last uh, update to klibc, so it's still maintained. But dietlibc, the last update was in 2018, so it's not currently maintained. Um, so first and foremost, glibc, which is the most common one, right? Um, the, well, it comes from GNU, of course, and it's designed to be backwards compatible. I think the, what they focus on is being portable um, and have a bunch of compatibility with pretty much everything. Uh, and it's, a, it's, it's like the standard, right? Um, it, it has a high performance. It slices GPL2 or newer. Uh, again, it's the most widely used. Um, it's supposed to be, I mean, it's less secure, and I put a question mark there because um, I think it depends. It's not that simple to just call that out. Um, it has, also has a larger footprint than others, uh, both on RAM and on storage. Uh, the next contender uh, would be Muscle, which is the uh, it's a it's a newer implementation that is focusing on simplicity and uh, code correctness. So they like redid stuff uh, and then made it simpler. At that point, uh, they claim to be more secure uh, because well they have a smaller attack surface, so there's less ways um, that they can be attacked. Um, they also don't support like old architectures and stuff on purpose, so it's less compatible. But at the same time, it has like less, uh, a smaller footprint, right? Uh, both on RAM and storage. Um, it also has like one lib file only. Lib, lib, lib M is empty and uh, libp3 is not necessary. So when you're linking, you don't have to do it, uh, pass it on to the linker. Uh, there are some claims that it's slower than others uh, for some workloads. So like some folks did uh, some. Uh, benchmarking, right? And then for some specific workloads, it, it ended up being uh, slower uh, for string operations and stuff like that. And this one is MIT licensed. Uh, we also have UC libc, which again, we UC libc development was on hold. Uh, I can't remember which, which date, but like 2018 or something like that. And someone took it and, and made uh, UC libc ng, which is currently being maintained. Uh, the the purpose of UC libc was to be as as compatible as possible with glibc but targeting embedded devices so this was specifically targeting embedded devices obviously for a smaller footprint and stuff 
It, uh, so again, it has a, a smaller footprint. It has like math operation support uh, and it's LGPL licensed and it supports, they didn't do like what Muscle did where like they took off a bunch of support for all architectures. Supposedly they, they support like all these uh, architectures as well, right? They use the glibc headers themselves instead of like Muscle has their own. And again, uh, the difference between this and Muscle the, by design is that they don't, uh, are, they're not, they're targeting, they're, they have a specific purpose, right? So for embedded devices, whereas Muscle doesn't have to be, like it's good if you use it, but it doesn't have to be for that. We have Bionic, which uh, if, again, if you're coming from an Android world, you're familiar with the, it's specific for Android devices, which at the time of development was, they were, using less, they have less memory available and less processing power. So that, that was the reasoning behind um, developing it. They, I think the reasoning also has to do with license. Uh, so they, Bionic is BAZ license. And it's also smaller than glibc. It's mostly POSIX, but there are some things that they took out uh, deliberately, right? And I haven't tried it, but there's a libhybris compatibility layer that you can use to use Bionic on, on a Linux system that's non-Android. Uh, we have some other C libraries that are for bare metal, which are also interesting. We got new lib, we got uh, AVR libc and pico libc now. New lib is kind of like the glibc but for bare metal. It's like the most standard and most widely used C library for, for those test cases. It's typically provided to you, like you don't realize it, but it's typically provided to you in the toolchain from a vendor, like if you download the ARM embedded toolchain or, or something from Renesas, uh, you're gonna get new lib there. It even, I believe GCC has a, like a smaller copy inside, actually. The, it has a few low level routines and you're supposed to glue it using libgloss to create, like to port it to a new architecture. The, sometimes you, for example, need to create stubs for functions that you don't have. So the weak symbols are there and you get like away with uh, the linker. The, again, that libgloss is the BSP part which is separated from the main C library. It's based on auto tools, like the, the build system itself, it's auto tools. And the parts of the code are GPL license, BSD, Apache, and TCL, depending on what you're looking at. So it's complex. The AVR libc is, it's a, it's a C library that's mostly, well not mostly, it's used for microchip uh, devices specifically. It has, it provides the most functionality as the, as the ISO standard and it provides like, it has a lot of uh, customizations and, and auxiliary code that is specific for those devices. Uh, it works with bin utils, so when, when, again, when you download like a toolchain that has this, it will have like the normal bin utils, but it'll have the C library coming from AVR. Um, it's BSD licensed, and <clears throat> we also have Picolipsy, which is, uh, I would say, is the new kid on the block. Uh, it's based on Newlive, and the essentially, someone at some point was looking at Newlive, and and they had some concerns. Some of the concerns were like Newlive was too big. Uh, it requires many support routines through uh, through libgloss. Uh, standard I/O requires a lot of code and a lot of RAM. Uh, it, it doesn't have a test suite. As I mentioned before, for example, it's built on auto tools. And they didn't see a reason to keep glibgloss. The, again, there was more RAM usage than people liked. And I think this is mainly the reason, like it was an old code base. And since it was developed first, C has changed a lot. So, so they wanted to do something different. Uh, the idea was like they were gonna use the new lib math uh, the string uh, locale implementations from, from it, and they're gonna adapt whatever it was on STDIO for uh, the AVR libc. They removed a struct reint, uh, it replaced it with like thread local storage instead. Uh, they provide a startup code that's a sample, linker scripts for architectures, the GCC, well, the compiler specs, uh, and a mechanism to get error codes uh, by default, I would say. So that way they could implement a test suite that uh, they would test something and get like zero or one or whatever, right? Uh, that's not something supported by new live uh, unless you modify it. 
Uh, they provide semi-hosting semi support, and which is essentially I.O. with the host that you're building on. The, again, they, they, they are built on a new standard, which is on newware, which is a C18. They replace auto tools with Meson, and they are BSD licensed. And uh, regarding some of the questions that were before on the, on the last talk, I think the printf ca test cases are still, uh, I can't remember what, what they are, but they're non-BSD. And since the test cases are not on the target, they were okay with that, right? Like they kept that stuff, but uh, if it, uh, like all the code that's in the actual target, it's still BSD. All right, build systems. Uh, of course, we got uh, the Yocta project or Open Embedded, which allows you to build a custom OS, a, a cross tool chain, and an SDK as well. Uh, on, Yocta, on the Yocta project right now, uh, we have several C libraries that are available, which are glibc, muscle, bare metal, which is no C library, new live, and just recently pico libc as well. How does that, how does that work? Um, typically, you would pick uh, you, you would pick your C library using a variable called tclibc. In this case, I chose muscle. So tclibc equals muscle, and what it does is that when you bit bake something, uh, the at the parsing stage, it will look at a, a file called tclibc-foo, right? Depending on the the name of that variable. Um, in this case, it would pick the tclibc muscle.inc file. And that file itself has some definitions that will allow the build system to compile against it. Uh, it's, it's a pretty simple file in this case. It, has, it allows you to create a, a, a libc extension so you would see like what files were built against that or what packages, I would say. Uh, it, like it, it sets up all the providers for different components of the C library. And uh, the libc dependencies variable essentially it's what gets uh, it's what gets the uh, put into the recipe sys root for a specific C library, right? So if you're building against Muscle, you would get those dependencies by default on base depends. If you were building a glibc, you would get the ones for glibc and, and such, right? Um, I'm gonna go faster because I want to be mindful of, of your time. The um, right. Um, so for this was a surprise to me. For for an open embedded, we have for compatibility with, with the C libraries, we have 23 patches on glibc, and we have two patches for muscle. Uh, both are upgraded, updated regularly, and we have stable releases uh, of the newest one every time, right? The size comparison, I did a size comparison last month, and we can see that for glibc, the, 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 the kernel is 25, 21 megabytes, and the, the root file system is 22 megabytes. Uh, obviously, the kernel's not going to change for Muscle, but uh, the same size. And for Muscle, the, the root file system ends up being 17 megabytes, so 4-ish four, four megabytes less in this scenario. We also have build root um, as, as a possible build system. Uh, now, what's, what's available on build root? Uh, build root supports glibc, Muscle. UC libc, which is again not supported by Yocto or Open Embedded at this time, and new live to some degree. I believe it's only supported for the microblaze. Um, I couldn't get it to build for ARM64, but the, the sort of like the source code, the metadata is there, so that's good. Um, the was there a question? <laughs> uh, up, upstream build root, at least, uh, only has new lib for um, a bare metal tool chain. So right, right, right. For bare metal, but but I I couldn't so get it to work for like ARM sixty four architecture. Not part of the normal tool chain. Uh, you can have two tool chains in build root: one for the the main Linux system and a separate right. one for the bare metal tool chain, and that's where new lib is used. Right. And the way, as I explained with BitBake, the way to pick it is using the tclibc variable, right? So for build root, the way you pick it is you, I think most of you are familiar with kconf. So uh, they use a, a kconf interface and you can you just do menu, menu config, go to toolchain c library, and then uh, check which, whichever you want, right? Uh, of the ones that I just mentioned. And there is like a separate uh, item for, for the bare metal one where you can pick new live. Um, now the 
size comparison, uh, I couldn't get build root. I'm sorry, I my lack of knowledge in build root. Um, it's uh, shameful. <laughs> I couldn't get build root to build uh, and and get the the right data because he was trying to get. Uh, I think it, the way it packages the file system is just different, and it wouldn't build with the default for 60 megabytes, so I had to put 80. So that's why it's, so it's, it says it's 80 megabytes. I'm sure it's way less than that. It's uh, because you use ARCH64? Yes, ARM64. Yeah, the Sorry. Linux diff config has uh, a zillion modules enabled, so mm. yeah. Yeah, that, that could be why. Um, I picked a random binary, which in this case, don't ask me, it was just there at some point. So to, to see that the size comparison between that, um, and as you can see, the first in the first scenario, it's linked against, it's using the runtime linker from glibc, and it, uh, its size is 27 kilobytes. For muscle, like I, I rebuilt everything with muscle, and um, the, the, the size comparison comes down to like 23 kilobytes in that scenario. So you can see how using Muscle will get you uh, a smaller footprint already. There are, I want to talk a little bit about other operating systems or conventional operating systems. Um, so you see, I consider myself to be a Yocto developer by day and sometimes by night as well. Uh, so I was biased. I thought at some point I saw that Muscle was supported on like Fedora or something and I, didn't think too much about it. I thought everything was being linked against Muscle. Uh, I didn't realize that not everyone's doing it that way, because that's the way we use it in Yocta, right? Like everything is built against a certain C library that you pick, and, and that's it. So on Ubuntu and Fedora, for example, there is a way to support Muscle. You can install uh, Muscle on them, but it, it's like a, it has like a wrapper. So you, can, you have to invoke a separate uh, GCC that will build you a binary that's linked against muscle. But everything really is, if you install a package from the repositories, it will be linked against uh, glibc. So, so it is, there's some support there, but not the same as I expected. Uh, I created a like, small binary there to test it. And as you can see, the, well, first of all, it works. But uh, it's, it's linked against, uh, uh, glibc. For Fedora, right, and then you can, for example, you can invoke the LDD for glibc on the muscle built uh, binary, that makes sense. Um, and you can see the difference between the, the linking, uh, the, the runtime linker there for both glibc and, and muscle. Um, Fedora is kind of like the same, they use the same approach. Uh, I did see that they have a muscle dash clang package. So you can do the same thing, but build with uh, build your binaries with Muscle instead. There's other two ones that I want to talk about quickly, which is Alpine Linux and Void. Um, Alpine is supposed to be like VM oriented and sorry, container oriented, and like very small. So they actually build against Muscle everything, but it's the other way around. Like they don't support glibc, uh, as far as I as I know. Void Linux does say that they support Muscle and everything is linked against Muscle, but they do have glibc counterparts in, in, the, uh, in the repositories. There are certain scenarios that are not supported, like NVIDIA doesn't support Muscle, so they use some sort of uh, ch root uh, sorcery there to circumvent that uh, and use glibc instead. And whenever they can't do that, they use flat packs, which include everything. So you're talking about ch root sorcery. Uh, glibc is really cranky when you try to ma manage the search path. It just won't let you. Uh, mm. Or any, uh, yeah, if you replace loader. Any of these other libraries make it easy to manage the search path and just say only look here? Or are they all pretty much the same? Uh, I believe they're pretty much the same, okay. to be honest. Okay. That's my understanding. Um, OK, so at the end of the day, so we saw a bunch of C libraries and like the differences and stuff. Uh, what, uh, which one should be used? And I think the answer is, uh, it depends. Like it's, it's up to you, because uh, every product is different and they have both pros and cons on, on all scenarios. And so for example, if you care about size, you're gonna pick a different one than if you care about compatibility, right? Uh, performance, security are some aspects that you uh, may wanna think about as well when you're picking one. But at, at, at least for me, what I value the most is flexibility. 
to allow you to switch back and forth for you may have two products and they may have different different needs right and you can use one or the other and to switch from one or the other I think it's, it's very valuable uh, the, the case study now so this is the reason why I started adding uh, Picalypse to open embedded uh, I was in a conference back in Seattle earlier this year and I went to a talk and it was about Picalypse so I, I got interested in it in it, and I decided that I was going to make it my hobby to try to include it. Um, the what do you need? So what do you need to include a new C library on on certain code base? Uh, so first of all, you need that tclibc file that I mentioned. In this case, it's tclibc picolibsy. Uh, I had already done a bunch of bare metal work before that because I also maintain new live on uh, open embedded. So I. It was a lot simpler because I, I just leveraged whatever I was using before. Uh, you need the recipe. Uh, there were some patches that I had to apply locally because otherwise it wouldn't build. And you also need to add a test case. Uh, otherwise, uh, Richard's not going to like that. Um, so the, again, this is the tclibc file that I mentioned for muscle. This is the way it looks for picolibc. And uh, you set a bunch of providers. You set the, the dependencies as well, and the since it's bare metal, you need to set up like the target OS and stuff. Uh, thanks, Tim. And uh, there are some extra dependencies uh, to build an SDK as well. But as you can see, it's not it's not a huge file. It's not very complicated. Uh, I think it's again it's part of the flexibility that Yocto uh, provides. This is this would be the recipe itself. So how to build it? Um, important things from this recipe are that you obviously don't want it to be compatible with Muscle or glibc, right? <laughs> There's no way you can build for several C libraries. Um, there are certain patches that I'm applying there uh, again to be able to build. For example, since Picolipsy is using Meson, uh, Meson by itself it tries to as part of it by default it tries to do some compiler checks at the beginning, and those are not going to work for bare metal. So even upstream Picolipsy does this uh, just in a different way. Um, so I had to do that on Yocto as well. The uh, there's also well that's the definition of how you build the the actual uh, hello world examples that Picolipsy provides. And important things to note there are. The, that I'm passing the specs file to GCC when I'm building it. Those spec files are provided by the source code as well, so it's it's really simple. You just have to pass it, and I need to I need it to, uh, as I mentioned, the Picolipsy slide. The they provide linker scripts depending on the architecture. So at the moment, I'm supporting ARM 60, ARM ARM 64, RISC 532, and RISC 564, and I just defined whatever linker uh, script needs to be used, and that's a test case, and I don't want to stay on that too long because I want to see if anyone has questions. Um, on this slide, essentially what I wanted to prove is was that QMU was working uh, using semi-hosting. You can see the simple hello world there. Um, that whole command, that full command, is whatever you get when you run, run QMU, uh, but you can slim it down. There's a bunch of extra stuff in there that you don't actually need. So, so yeah, you can get Hello World. Um, you can get a test case. It's currently being tested. Uh, we saw some tool chains. We saw the C libraries that are available on the different build systems and, and different Linux operating systems distros. Uh, the availability, usage, comparison, and a case study. Uh, was there questions? Kate. Long distance. I, I feel like... Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. let's do it the, the cool way. That'll work better. Thank you. Um, just a comment of another data point for you. Um, mm -hmm. Zephyr's been using Picolib and is moving pretty much entirely over to Picolib. Oh, great. Um, and so we're using it fairly established. So having it in an open embedded and having it that way will help interoperability on some of the things they're using. Um, Yocto with Zephyr and Linux and Zen. So. I'll make sure to update Metasephyr now. Okay, then. Thank you. <laughs> uh, there's a question over there. Okay. 
Just a comment. The reason LDD doesn't work in your case is because the LDD is actually the GNU, GNU libc. Right. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it invokes the runtime linker from glibc. Yeah, then the proper way would be like BSDs to have a proper LDD executive right. that works against anything. Any other questions? There's, I think that's probably the last one, mm. Tim. Just a small question. You mentioned NVIDIA there. How, uh, for big SOCs, is, do we still have the freedom to change them? For example, NVIDIA Jets and everything else where we have uh, winter parts. Uh, what is the experience from? Sorry, can you repeat the question? The question is, how uh, much freedom do we have to change the in Yocto when it comes to bigger SOCs from vendors like NVIDIA and stuff like that, where you might need to use the vendor-provided uh, vendor binaries regarding accelerators and stuff like that. Do anyone have experience with that? that I, I understood part of the question uh, of freedom, but there's parts that I didn't understand. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry. Uh, my guess would be limited. <laughs> okay. The question was that uh, changing we can do it in Yocto here, right? But for many of the windows providing a BSP, there's also binary uh, part of that. So uh, I see. Well, yeah, the that's yeah, uh, yeah. So for, so for render tool chains, you definitely have no no freedom, <laughs> and I believe that's on purpose. Uh, but again, as I mentioned on the previous talk, I think having your own having control of your tool chain is something that's undervalued, and we we're out of time. Thank you, guys. Yeah. NVIDIA is the worst offender here. Don't get me started. <laughs>